So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to mask photos or textures on top of type or designs, and actually essentially just recreate the thumbnail for this video. So right here, I have the basic design for the thumbnail laid out. And the important thing to note here is that there is no background on any of these elements. So whatever you create, whether it's an Illustrator or Photoshop, that you want to mask out onto a photo or a texture, just make sure that it doesn't have a background because it will make life a whole lot easier for you as we go and do this. And also I have a bunch of textures kind of just ready to go here on a second screen that I'll be using. So just have some kind of texture or photo or something ready to go before you do this that's big enough to fill the document that you've made inside Photoshop. And also I went ahead and made these things on their own layers. So the type is on its own layer, my logo is on its own layer, this background kind of black border is on its own layer. So if you want to do individual textures for individual items, you can go ahead and make those all on their own layers as well. So the first thing you want to do after you have your Photoshop document kind of ready to go here with your design inside of it is you want to bring your texture in. So I'm just going to pick one of these random rock textures that I have and bring it into Photoshop here. I'm just dragging and dropping this from a second screen, but alternatively, if you don't want to do that, you can also go to File and then Place Embedded or Place Linked. It doesn't really matter which of those two options you choose to use. The important thing is that you have a texture inside of here that you want to apply your design to. So there's a few different ways that you can actually go ahead and do this. So right now in my layers palettes, my texture is right here. It's called geode 16 and it's actually right on top of the text. So one really easy way to go ahead and do this is just right click on your texture and make sure that your texture is right above the layer of the thing that you want to mask it out on. And with that texture turned on, just right click on that texture. And from this options menu, you want to go to create clipping mask, which is basically right in the middle. And what this will do is mask the texture on top of the type and very easily do it. So if I move the texture off the type, you can kind of see some cool effects here as the actual texture layer is no longer covering that type. So this actually looks kind of like an iceberg on top of type or something like that. It's a really cool effect, very easy to do, and it preserves your type underneath of it. So you can move this around just like this and make it really easy to kind of do some cool effects. But my personal favorite way of doing this, I'm just backing out here, is to apply the item as a mask. So once you have your element that you want to apply onto the texture, and once again, it's very important this has a transparent background in order for this to work, there's the thumbnail portion of that layer, which is where you're going to want to click. So you want to hold down control on a PC or command on a Mac and then click on that thumbnail. And then you can tell it'll go ahead and highlight around the edges of that element. And then you can just hide the visibility of this layer by clicking the eyeball icon next to it and then turn back on the visibility of your texture layer or if you already had that turned on you don't have to turn it on again obviously but with that texture layer selected what you want to do is go down to the bottom of the layers palette and there's an option that looks like a rectangle with a circle in the middle if you highlight over it it'll say add a layer mask you just want to click that once and that'll go ahead and mask out your object on top of the type. So if I turn on the type here and then turn on this texture, you can see a little bit of a faint outline of that type. So you just turn off whatever element I masked on behind it so it doesn't kind of peek out a little bit and make like a little pixel line around it. And the really cool thing about using a mask is you can turn it off by just shift clicking on that mask and you can see your original thing. Or if you have the mask part clicked, you can either click on the thumbnail of the texture itself or you can click on the thumbnail portion of the mask. And if you have the thumbnail portion of the mask selected, you can hit control I on a PC or command I on a Mac to invert it. And this will basically reverse the effect of the mask, which just gives you some additional ways you can go ahead and kind of apply textures and make some cool looks. I think this is an interesting way of working. If you want to very quickly just flip between those once Again, that's control I on a PC or command I on a Mac. So right there, you have a very easy way to mask your stuff. And if you don't want to use it, you can go ahead and just delete it. And then the actual mask there is gone. And now for one of my personal favorite ways of working, I like making folders. So in the layers menu, just go down to the folder option It's kind of near the middle. It'll say create a new group or actually it's a group option, I guess. So create that new group and go ahead and name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna name this texture 
because it'll be full of textures. And then I actually made a folder with all of the mask elements in here, this geo texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the geo texture that we have in here. But this folder right here has the type element as well as my logo and then the border lines in it. And this is all just in a group right here. So if I turn this on and off, you can see that all turns off. The Photoshop thing is on its own layer because I don't wanna mask a texture over that. But I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Control plus J on a PC or Command plus J on a Mac to duplicate this entire folder. That also works on individual layers if you ever wanna do that. I'm gonna hide the visibility of the original one. And then on this new group that I have with all my stuff on it, I'm just gonna right click on that and then merge group. So we have one single layer that still has a transparent background, as you can see here, with all of my elements on it. If you built all your elements as a single file or a single layer, you don't have to really worry about this step because it's already done for you. But once again, I'm gonna hit Control and then click on that thumbnail, or if I'm on a Mac, I'll hold Command and then click on that thumbnail just so it selects this. And then I can go ahead and hit that eyeball icon to hide it. And then I'm just gonna go to my texture group right here, this folder that I made, and I'm gonna click on that so it's highlighted and then turn that into a mask by clicking on this add a layer mask button that looks like a rectangle with a circle in the middle of it. So now we have a masked out version of the texture inside a folder. So now if I were to drag in different rock textures right here into Photoshop, it'll just take a bit of time to process and then move them into this folder. Basically, no matter where I move this texture, it'll automatically mask it out inside this folder. So I can have a bunch of different texture elements in here that are basically automatically masked out because the folder is doing all the work for us. So as I bring more and more textures in here, I can create a layered effect of different textures very quickly, very easily. I can just plop these on here and I'm actually gonna throw on a black background so we can see this a little bit better. But as I move these around in real time, you can see that it just masks over the different textures. I can change the order of the textures inside the folder so I can have a certain texture be on top if I want it to be. Uh, this is just a very quick and easy way to work when you're adding in a bunch of different textures that makes a pretty cool look in my opinion because that layering of different textures of different looks of different colors can be really cool as it takes effect on your particular design or illustration, however you're choosing to work throughout this process. So I'm actually almost done with this one right here. I'm just gonna keep on dragging textures until we fill up this mask so that all this type is covered up. But as you can tell, it doesn't take me much time at all. I'm doing this all in real time right here. The real time I'm spending is actually just trying to figure out what textures I actually want to use on this because sometimes finding those perfect combinations can just take a little bit of time. And that's kind of the fun part of working with a bunch of textures inside of a folder like this. And then once again, of course, if I don't want this particular pink texture to be in the bottom, I can just move it up in my layers palette and then it will cover over things just like this. So as you can see, it's really easy to go in there and do that. So right here we have a really cool masked out photo of a bunch of textures and it was very easy to do. And this is all in a group. So it's in a folder right here that I can then hold shift down and click on that mask if I wanna turn that off. Or once again, I can click on the mask itself hit control plus I on a PC or command plus I on a Mac, which will invert it and then give us a whole new look. So we can kind of quickly test different looks for this and see what looks the best for our project. But that's really it for this video. I do hope you found these different techniques helpful because it's a lot of fun working like this. I always love adding textures and stuff just to see how it looks. So if you did like it and you did find it helpful, please hit the like button. And also feel free to leave a comment about what you thought about the video or if you make any cool stuff using this technique, you can throw links in the comment section for different people to check out. But that's it. If you like this video and you wanna see more stuff like this, please subscribe. I do my best to keep creating new content just like this for illustrators and designers. Thanks so much for watching.